welcome back to our general math class. This time, we'll be talking about another type of interest, the compound interest. The compound interest, which is denoted by I sub C, is the interest that is computed on the principal and also on the accumulated past interests. Unlike simple interest, it is computed based on previous terms interest and future or maturity value. In the same way, the amount at the start of time in years is computed based on this previous term's future value. By saying this, we mean the following. Let us use the opening problem we used in introducing simple interest. That is, suppose you have earned 5,000 pesos from a part-time job after some time. You decided to invest it for 3 years in a bank which offers 5% compounded annually. How much will you have by the end of the period? Look at the table beside me. Notice that the compound interest changes from year to year. From 250 pesos, it became 262 pesos and 50 cents in the second year. And 275 pesos and 62 cents in the third year. And it depends on the constantly changing principal amount. The principal amount, meanwhile, depends on the previous year's amount after three years or future value which is affected by the compound interest. There are, they are interrelated. Since there is accumulation, then their computations depend on previous years. Again, let us review some terms associated with compound interest first. Principal, denoted by P, is the amount of money borrowed or invested on the loan date or origin date. Rate, denoted by R, is the annual rate, usually percent, changed by the lender or rate of increase of the investment. Time or term, denoted by T, is the amount of time in years the money is borrowed or invested. Compound interest, denoted by I sub C, is interest that is computed on the principal and also on the accumulated past interests. Maturity value or future value, denoted by F, is the amount after two years that the lender receives from the borrower on the maturity. The maturity or future value denoted by F under compound interest is defined by F equals P times the quantity 1 plus I sub M or I to the M over M raised to the MT. Okay, I repeat, it is defined by F equals P times the quantity of 1 plus I sub M or I to the M over M those quantity raised to the M times T, where P is the principal amount, I to the M is the nominal interest rate or the annual rate, M is the frequency of conversion, and T is time in years. Given this, the compound interest denoted by I sub C is defined by I sub C equals F minus P. Let us have some applications of simple interest or compound interest in real-life problems. Example 1. What is the maturity value and the compound interest if 30,000 pesos is compounded annually at an interest rate of 7% in 4 years? So the given in example 1 are the following. First, the value of P or the principal amount which is 30,000 pesos, M which is equal to 1 because the value of P, 30,000, the amount of money is compounded annually. So that is compounded once a year. So the value of M is 1. And then I to the M which is the rate is 7%, the compound interest rate. 7% or in decimals, that is 0 0.07. And then the value of T is 4. 
that again is a number of units, expressed in number of units. And then we are going to solve for the value of f first, the maturity or the future value. And since this is a problem on compound interest, we will use this general equation or formula. F equals P times the quantity of 1 plus the fraction 1i to the m over m raised to the mt power. So, which is raised to mt power, this binomial. Okay, next, by substitution, we'll have F equals... P is 30,000, constant 1, times 1, plus i to the m is 0 0.07, m is 1, raised to the power 1 times 4, m again is 1, and t is 4. Next, we know that 0 0.07 divided by 1 is still 0 0.07, then plus 1, that is 1.07. So, recall PEMDAS. Before we multiply 30,000 by 1, we have to uh, simplify first the terms or the expression inside the grouping symbol. And then next to P, P uh, means parenthesis or grouping symbol, is E, which is exponent. So we have first to uh, simplify this part, which is raised to an exponent, before we may multiply this by 30,000. That's why we are focusing first on this part. So, 0 0.07 divided by 1, of course, is still 0 0.07 plus 1 is 1.07. And then, 1 times 4 is 4. So, let us raise first 1.07 to the 4th power before we multiply it by 30,000. So, by using your calculator, when you raise it to 4, you'll get 1.3108. That's rounded to the nearest uh, 4 decimal places. You may round it to any... Uh, number of decimal places but since I will be rounding uh, the, uh, the final answer to the nearest uh, two decimal places to, 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 or to two decimal places then I choose to I choose more than two decimal places in in the solution so when I multiply this by 30,000, you will get 39,323.88. That is already rounded to the nearest hundreds or two decimal places. So that's the maturity value. How about the compound interest? Okay, that's the F, the maturity value. Now for the interest, this is the formula for the compound interest. I sub C is equal to F minus T. Now that we have a value for F also, aside from the given value of P, which is 30,000, then we may now solve for I sub C, or compound interest. By substitution, this is the value of F, uh, 39,323.88, minus the value of P, this is given the problem 30,000. So the compound interest is 9,323.88 in 4 years. Example 2. Candy plans to invest and make it grow to 250,000 pesos in 5 years. How much would you advise her to invest in an account that offers 6% compounded annually? The given in this problem are the following. The value of F or the maturity or future value which is 250,000 pesos because um, Candy wants her investment to grow to this amount. So this is the value of F or the future value. Then we also have the value of P, which is 5 years. The value of M, which is equal to 1. Because what is involved here is compounded annually. That means this happens once a year. So M is equal to 1. Then we also have the compound interest rate, which is 6% or 0 0.06. That will be the value of i to the m. And then, we will solve for the principal amount, the original amount, the amount that Candy will invest. So, since this is a problem which involves compound interest, then we will be using this formula. f is equal to p times the quantity of 1 plus i to the m over m raised to the mt power. 
So, we have recalled already in example 1, uh, the PEMDAS rule. So, we know by now that this will be simplified first and raised to an exponent before, uh, uh, before we can multiply it by the value of B. But first, before doing that, let us have the substitution. So, the given in this problem is the value of F, which is 250,000, equals what is missing is P. So, P times the quantity of 1, constant in the equation, plus 0 0.06, that is only substitution, M is equal to 1 from the given, then 1 times T is 5. That will be the uh, exponent. Again, 0 0.06 divided by 1, of course, is itself 0 0.06 plus 1 is 1.06. And then for the exponents, 1 times 5 is 5. Equals in the left hand side that left hand side of the equation that is 250,000. And then let us raise 1.06 to the fifth power. We'll get 1.33823 or 33,823. That's uh, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. And then to solve for P, by using MPE, we'll divide both sides by this number. Using our calculator, we'll get 186,814.54. So that's rounded to the nearest decimal equals P. By reflexive property, that is the value of, uh, that's the money that can be should invest. 186,814 pesos and 54 cents. Example 3. How long will it take 5,000 pesos to earn 500 pesos if the interest is 11% compounded quarterly? The given in this example are the following. The principal amount, which is 5,000, the compound interest, which is 500, and then the rate, the compound interest, i to the m, which is 11% or 0 0.11. And then we also have the value of m, which is 4, because uh, it is compounded quarterly. So that happens 4 times a year. So the value of m is equal to 4. And then we are going to solve for the value of t because uh, we are asked for the length of time. So, that's T. Again, since this involves compound interest, then we will be using this equation. And then, by substitution, this equation is what we will get. F is 5,500. Where the problem is 5,500? We know that the future value or maturity value is P, the principal amount, plus the compound interest. So, 5,000 5, plus 500 is 5,500. Equals, P is 5,000 times the quantity 1 plus I to the N is 0 0.11 over M is 4. Raised to the exponent 4, that's the value of M, times T. Next, we may simplify this part. The expression in inside the grouping symbol so 0 0.11 divided by 4 is 0 0.0275 plus 1 that is 1.0275 raised to the 40 times 5000 again we cannot just simply multiply these two because this number is still raised to an exponent 40 what we will do is, we will divide both sides by this factor, 5,000. That's by MPE. So, 5,500 divided by 5,000 is 1.1. Equals, when you divide the right-hand side of the equation by 5,000, of course, that will be 1. 5,000 divided by 5,000 is 1. 1 times this is, is still this number. And then, since this is, a, this is an exponential equation, because the variable is acts as an exponent, then we may solve it by uh, converting it 
to a logar in logarithmic form to a logarithmic equation. So in logarithmic form, that is 40 equals logarithm of 1.1 to the base 1.0275. And then, by using your calculator, we'll be able to know the value of this logarithm, which is 3.51326. And then, by simply dividing both sides by 4, we'll be able to find or to solve for the value of t, which is 0 0.88 years, which is equivalent to 3.52 quarters that can be solved by multiplying it by 4 because there are 4 uh, quarters of course that's why we call it quarters in a year so 0 0.88 year this is year years is equivalent to 3.52 quarters and because the interest is earned only at the end of the period then um the four quarters or one year is needed so that the interest can reach 500 pesos. So T is equal to one year. By now, you very well know how compound interest works and how it is computed. Invest your money wisely. Until next time.